In Nigeria, more than 40 insurgents and four soldiers have died in clashes between troops and Islamists near the scene where some 20 or 200, rather, abducted schoolgirls are believed to be held in the northern Borno state. A defence spokesman said the capture of several ringleaders in the area sparked the clashes on the outskirts of Bulambuli late Friday. Bulambuli is between the town of Alagamo and Sambisa Forest, where the students who were abducted early last week are thought to be held. The mainly Christian girls were abducted at their school by men posing as soldiers. A US-based Nigerian doctor has written an open letter to President Goodluck Jonathan asking for permission to arm vigilante groups in Borno State to go in search of the girls. Peregrino Brimer tells RFI's Rosie Collier why he's declared a counter-jihad against the Islamic insurgents in Nigeria. As this crisis goes out of hand, the people have to do something. We have been at the forefront a lot of times in, you know, mobilizing people to act appropriately to check situations where you know, our leadership is not able to. And you're talking in the plural and talking about we. So who are the we that you refer to besides yourself? Right. Now, I'm a member of two organizations. I'm a member of ENDS. I'm one of the founders of ENDS, Every Nigerian Do Something, which um, was initiated last year, March 18th, when there was a bombing at um, a big, a big, one of the big bombings. And we were like, it's time citizens get involved in doing something, in doing things. And then there's another organization that I work closely with, which is Muslims Against Terror, headed by um, Dr. J.P. Ahmadi in Nigeria. And that organization, too, has been at the forefront of defending churches since there were problems and, um, you know, trying to, because as long as the individual citizens don't get involved, you know, the suspicion increases and there's a risk of us, Nigeria, turning into a situation like we have in Car. And that's one of the main things that, you know, must be avoided at all costs. And that's what the terrorists want. Getting close to the specifics of what you're calling on people to do, what, what are you calling on people to do? So the civilian JTF has led the way. Since they got involved in the conflict 10 months ago, they secured, they aided, worked with the security services. And these are civilians, most of them use knives and, you know, sticks. And they have been providing a third layer or a very solid layer of security in um, Borno especially. So I've been in touch with civilian JTS. I talk with them every day. I donated walkie-talkies, donated tasers, touchlights. We've donated, um, our organization ENT has donated, in collaboration with Muslims against Israel, has donated a lot of things to them. So we, with them, they've been securing Borno, but this is not enough because Lots of times there's a suspicion that the military are not eager to go after the terrorists or there's questions about it. There was recently a report in Voice of America where it was said that actually military ambushed each other. Something that the military, I must add for our listeners, something that the military has denied on uh, this radio denied, before. Right. So we have, based on all of this, this you know, suspicion, distrust, and based on all of that, with the civilians involved, then it's impossible to waste time trading blame where the people are involved. The more you get the locals, the people, and the people of the country involved, there's less, there's more, pos- there's more effort, there's more efficiency, and then there's less possibility of trading blame. But right now, what we are doing is we are mobilizing people, and the result has been phenomenal. In fact, right now, we are creating a database for people to sign up who are volunteering for this, because it's been phenomenal. Muslim, Christians from everywhere, you know, just got a message from someone in Calabar, which is down in South, and he said, I'm a Christian, enough is enough, I'm ready to go up there and fight this fight, I'm ready to volunteer to sacrifice my life. We got some Nasarawa states, a Christian, we got a, a wing commander, retired wing commander in the army. We've been getting literally hundreds of responses, and everywhere the article is published, we have people commenting and saying, we are going to do this, we are going to do this, enough is enough. So the people are ready to go in. We are ready to go into those forests. We're going to go in and clear this out once and for all. But then, you know, let's face it, anyone who is uh, familiar with the internet and uses it regularly will know that, you know, people will take on kind of online identity whereby, that you know, a person can comment anonymously on something uh, and perhaps would uh, comment much more strongly anonymously than they would in person. So how can you be sure then that this sort of sentiment 
to go and wage a uh, counter jihad isn't just a sentiment and is actually going to transform into action. We believe in the um, the will, the good will of the people. But right now, civilian JTF, okay, in Borno State, there's an organization called Boyers. That's the government officially registered a bunch of civilian JTF. And they are called Boyers. They are on government salary. And they are about a 1,000. So the government officially took in about um, a 1,000. Now, the civilian JTF are not yet absorbed by the government, and they are over 3,000. When the girls were abducted, these guys were the ones who went with the families for 100 kilometers. They were the ones who were pursuing the terrorists town to town, village to village, asking, okay, they passed here, they went here, and they pursued for 100 kilometers till it got to a point where it's only them, and they have sticks and knives, and they're getting close, and the military are not with them. That was Peregrino Brymar speaking to RFI's Rosie Collier there. 21 minutes past seven in Nairobi. You're listening to Paris Live on RFI. The Nigerian military is continuing to search for 190 schoolgirls who remain in captivity after being kidnapped nearly two weeks ago by suspected Islamic insurgents in the northeast of the country. More than 200 girls were initially abducted by men posing as soldiers at their school in Borno State, but several managed to escape when the vehicle they were travelling in broke down. The military clashed with suspected members of the Islamist group known as Boko Haram on Friday evening, close to where the girls are believed to have been taken. In the days after the girls went missing, parents and members of local vigilante groups began searching for them. But upon discovering what they say was a Boko Haram camp deep inside the Sambisa forest in Borno State, the group turned back, fearing for their lives. RFI's Rosie Collier spoke to a vigilante who asked to remain anonymous for fear of reprisals. He said the group is well armed and has armoured personnel carriers stolen from the Nigerian military, but that the girls were not at the camp and may be in neighbouring Cameroon. They have many, many arms. They have APC. Most of them, they are holding AK-47 and MG. Does Boko Haram have better equipment than the Joint Military uh, Task Force? Yeah, they collect some vehicle into a Nigerian army. What about these schoolgirls? Did you see the schoolgirls in the camp? No, the civilians they tell of there, they warn us, they tell us they see and uh, two motorcycles of the Boko Haram with the two buses. They carry the woman, they pass Banchi area and they enter Cameroon.